folks so it's time for us to go to the next set of questions um just 10 more questions for this session as usual uh, quickly we will uh, go through it and then we will get the uh, answers done why are flags needed in microprocessor or microcontroller uh, what are the flags supported in 8085 let's not go detail about 8085 because it's almost old but still it makes a lot of sense to learn 8085 before you learn anything else i believe what are flags in microprocessor simple you can see the picture that i have pasted out from the f1 or some race um the flag lets the driver know that the race is all over and he can come out so likewise when an operation is being done say it an addition or a subtraction or a multiplication or a logical operation once the operation is done it should be known that the operation is completed or once the operation has given you a result of zero it should be let to the user know that um know that it is zero uh, when it is a negative result we should know that it is a negative result so for the purpose of knowing what is the result we keep flags there is a zero flag there is a parity flag all these flags will help you to understand the results understand the state of the operation that's what is called flags flags are there in almost all the processor all the controllers have got flags it's very important what are the types of interrupt supported two types of interrupt supported uh, in microprocessor how are they different maskable interrupt and non maskable interrupt simple maskable interrupts are the one which you can stop non maskable interrupts are the one which you cannot stop simple you cannot ignore for example you are asking me a question as a student uh, i can prefer to ignore it if i teach something else which is very important right now but my head of the department is asking me a question in a meeting i cannot ignore it that's a high priority interrupt i need to answer i cannot postpone it so the interrupts which are ignorable are called as non maskable interrupts and the interrupts which are not ignorable are called um not ignorable are called maskable inter- non maskable interrupts ignorable are called maskable interrupts what is isr isr is interrupt service routine what do you mean by that simple i am giving you an assignment or let us keep it this way the same professor or student example can hold good here you are asking me a question so what will i do immediately i need to go search in my brain for the relevant answer and then i will give you the answer and that's all the way i search for the relevant answer in my brain records and i get you the answer is called interrupt service routine you are calling an interrupt to perform some operation and that interrupt will immediately call the corresponding piece of code for it to accomplish the operation and that's called interrupt service routine that's very simple what is an operating system well uh, many will say that it is an interface between the user and the computer and whatever the user types will be converted to the language that the computer understands and vice versa uh, all these things are okay I, i will not say it is wrong but it is not an engineering answer i believe so we need to give an answer that is really really uh, simple as well as uh, perfect uh, can we live without brain no we can't can we use any of our uh, body parts or resources without brains con- brains knowledge no we cannot when we call somebody as brain dead that means that his brain is not working but rest of the parts are all working so it's as simple as that operating system is almost the brain of the computer which i mean it manages all the resources of the computer without which we cannot access the resources of the computer and another thing the operating system is a very uh, a very important stuff which does not really want us to add more to the system or remove from the system for example it never prompts us to remove couple of keys from the keyboard it never asks us to expand the monitor whatever is available it is maintaining and it is giving us the best resource so an operating system is a resource manager which manages all the resources without having necessity for you to add more to it or remove more from it that's it now a real time operating system what is real time what is real time operating system two questions are to be combined now first thing real time is something uh, which can be explained with a simple example you are going in a car in a highway okay that's a beautiful car let's assume that you are going in a car and suddenly a water lorry is coming in the opposite direction the water lorry's nature is always to uh, get into accident mode so what will you do now you understand that there is going to be an accident so what will you do now you need to slow down because you are coming at a speed of say 150 you'll immediately apply brakes and when you apply brake the car immediately sends out a message to you assume that it's it's quite hypothetical uh, it's sending it's sending out a message that sorry boss i cannot stop the vehicle now let's stop after 10 minutes what will happen that's all nothing can happen and you are finished so when you apply brake the immediate action expected is to stop the vehicle without any delay that to perfectly this is called real time logical correctness of the operation within a deterministic deadline is called real time and any operating system which supports this is called real time operating system that's it can i name one real time operating system here vxworks that's that's what we all know real time blinks so it's very easy 
Now, next question. What is context switching? Simple. Give an example. Uh, let's take an example again. I am playing a game in my mobile. Okay. I am playing, say for example, I am playing uh, Angry Birds game in my mobile. And uh, suddenly I get a call from my dad. So what will happen now? The call will get the highest priority. And the screen will shift. And the call will be getting the highest priority now. And I will start talking the call. Start attending the call. So once the call is attended, I will get back to the same game at whichever level I am stopped. I am not going to reinitiate it from the beginning. So the context of the operation with the mobile has been completely shifted from the game to the call and call to the game back. This is called context switching. The complete context is switched from one operation to another because of the highest priority stuff and we handle it and that's called context switching. And context switching is closely related to another term called as PCB which is called as process control block. I'll explain you that little later. We normally use the term main memory quite frequently. What is it? Is there any other memory available in the system? Yes. There are a lot of other memories available in the system actually. Secondary memory, uh, catch, many uh, really. Memory is really something which is very important which we cannot ignore. But main memory is nothing but RAM. Whatever we uh, call as RAM is referred to be as main memory which is nothing but the random access memory. Why do we call it main memory? That's the main point. For example, when you want to compile a file, you compile it. But when you want to run the compiled file, you need to move it to the RAM. Only then the file will be executed. So for us to get the file executed, we need to load it onto the RAM. That's why we call it main memory. Define interrupt latency. Well, whenever you are asking me a question, for example, if I answer you immediately, the interrupt latency is zero. If you are asking me a question and if I say that, sorry, I'm busy in something, I'll complete it and then I'll, I'll get back to you. It means that the amount of time that I make you wait for you to get an answer is latency. That is called interrupt latency. So please understand, when you call for an interrupt, it need not respond to you immediately. It could be doing something else which is of highest priority, so it may let you wait also. That's called interrupt latency. What is addressing mode? Why is it important? Simple. Addressing mode will let the processor know from where the data has to be taken from where the data has to be taken and to where the data has to be stored. That's all. It will tell you what are all the operands that we need to use for the operation from which location, where should we store the result after the operation. There are many addressing modes which we will see in the forthcoming sessions. Thank you very much. Have a great day.